Hello, I'm Alex and welcome to the History Chronicles. If you like our work, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you'd like to support the channel in return for exclusive perks, please visit our Patreon page. Now, on with the video. Who is Xi Jinping? How did he come to power in China? And what are his policies? Today's History Chronicle begins in the spring of 2018. That February, the Chinese Communist Party unveiled plans to remove the two-term limit on presidents of China, and the decision was ratified by the party on the 11th of March 2018. The removal of the limit ensured that the current president, Xi Jinping, whose second five-year term only commenced on the 17th of March 2018, will be able to serve a third term beginning in 2023, and possibly more. This will make Xi Jinping the most powerful ruler in modern China since Chairman Mao Zedong. So, who is Xi Jinping? And how did this son of an official, who was once purged from the Chinese Communist Party, rise to such enormous power? Xi Jinping was born on the 15th of June 1953 in Beijing, the son of Xi Zhongzun and his wife, Qingxin. His father was one of the most significant figures within the early communist leadership in China, he had fought with the Red Army in the northeastern provinces during the 1930s and 1940s, having joined the communists when he was just 15 years of age. He then became a leading propaganda official in the early 1950s, but he fell out of favour with Chairman Mao during the Great Leap Forward, and at the time of the Cultural Revolution of the mid-1970s, he was purged from the party and imprisoned, before being rehabilitated in the early 1980s. Given his father's relatively high position within the communist hierarchy, Xi's early life was spent in an affluent environment in Beijing, but when his father was purged, he sent Xi to the countryside in 1969, where he worked as an agricultural labourer for six years. Then, as his father was rehabilitated towards the end of the 1970s, Xi was able to study at university, attending Beijing Tsinghua University, from which he graduated in 1979 with a degree in chemical engineering. He then served for three years as a secretary to Geng Biao, the Chinese Minister for National Defence. Xi's 30s and early 40s were spent working his way up within the hierarchy of the Communist Party and the state which it governed. In 1982, he moved on from working with Biao and left Beijing to take up a position working as a deputy secretary or regional manager for the Communist Party in Hebei province in northern China. He served there for three years until 1985, at which point he was promoted to the position of Vice Mayor of Xiaomen in Fujian Province. He was also appointed as a party committee member at this time, and became a married man when he wed Peng Liuan, a well-known folk singer in 1987. In the 1990s, Xi continued to advance within the hierarchy of the Communist Party in China. By 1995, he had acquired the office of Deputy Provincial Party Secretary, and then in 1999 he was appointed as an acting governor of the province of Fujian in the southeast of China a position which was made permanent in 2000, and which placed Xi in charge of governing a province with a population of over 30 million people. His main concern, while in Fujian, was reducing the enormous environmental pollution, which was occurring as a result of the economic miracle which was underway throughout China in the 1990s and 2000s. His most senior appointment yet came in 2002, when he was moved to Zhejiang province further to the north to become governor there. Zhejiang having a population nearly twice as large as Fujian, and also being home to the major city of Hangzhou. His focus here was on improving the infrastructure of the province, to increase the sustainability of economic development in one of the richest provinces of China. A clear pattern had emerged in Xi's upward progression by this time. One of a highly competent bureaucrat, carefully and efficiently working his way up the ladder of power within communist China. Any would-be leader, though, needs to be close to the levers of power, and for all that Xi had accomplished by the time that he had reached his 50th birthday in 2003, he had largely remained a provincial official. This all changed in early 2007, when a political scandal over a corrupt pension fund scheme in the city of Shanghai led to several of the upper leadership in the city being removed, and in Xi's appointment as party secretary in the city. This now made Xi the most senior political figure in the economic capital of China, which was also one of the most populous cities in the world. The reassignment to Shanghai provided Xi with a much-needed boost within the party hierarchy, one which he expertly exploited. In October 2007, he was selected to serve as a member of the Chinese Communist Party's political bureau, or Politburo. 
This nine-member council is effectively the highest political body in China, and appointment to it signalled Xi's ascent as one of the most powerful political figures in the country. He was soon being spoken as a possible successor to Hu Jintao. Since 2002, the general secretary of the party, and since 2003, the president of China. Xi's early period as vice president was critical in catapulting him onto the world stage. In the opening months of 2009, he undertook a wide-ranging tour of Latin America to promote Chinese business ties to regions where the country was now in competition with the United States. Then in October 2010, he gained an appointment as vice chairman of the Central Military Commission. This was an office which Hu Jintao had once held, and Xi's appointment to it two years after his assumption of the vice presidency solidified the perception that Xi was Hu's successor designate. At the Chinese Communist Party's 80th Birthday Congress in November 2012, Xi gained re-election to the Politburo, and was also appointed to succeed Hu Jintao as General Secretary of the party, following the President's resignation of that office. As modern-day China is a one-party state without open elections, Xi's ascent to the presidency was now a formality. On the 14th of March 2013, he was elected as President of China following ratification by the National People's Congress, making him the seventh official head of state since the Communist Party seized power in 1949. Xi's star has continued to rise since his first ascent to become the head of state. Unlike his predecessor Hu Jintao, or other former presidents such as Jiang Zemin, his first term was to act as a springboard to not just a second term followed by retirement, but a more concrete and indefinite hold on power. His first term was focused on a massive anti-corruption campaign. The enormous economic boom which China had enjoyed since the 1980s, having created widespread corruption throughout Chinese society and officialdom. This soon saw thousands of officials being removed from their posts. By the end of 2017, over one million corrupt officials had been penalised in some fashion. Xi's first term also witnessed a significant consolidation of his hold on power. The anti-corruption campaign, while genuinely an effort to root out malpractice in Chinese society, was also exploited as a way of purging officials who were either seen as rivals for power or as having failed to support Xi's growing faction of supporters. The title of core leader of China, which previously had only been granted to Mao, Deng Xiaoping and Jiang Zemin, was then granted to Xi by the Communist Party in October 2016, placing him in the pantheon of modern-day China's most powerful leaders. Perhaps the last preliminary to the removal of any restrictions on Xi serving further terms beyond the end of his second term in 2023 came in 2017, when the Chinese Communist Party promulgated the importance of what was broadcast to the world as Xi Jinping thought. This new system of Chinese Communism was designed to offer a new vision of Chinese socialism with, supposedly, Chinese characteristics for a modern world where in reality China was not in any way a communist state, but rather an aggressive proponent of state-led capitalism. Only Mao had previously been the progenitor of a whole new political ideology for the country. Then in March 2018, Xi was unanimously elected to serve a second term as president by the Communist Party, marking the culmination of a remarkable consolidation of his power during his first five years as president. Xi Jinping is the seventh individual to lead the People's Republic of China since its foundation in 1949. This means he is at the head of a political party in the Chinese Communist Party, which counts approximately 90 million people as members, and which rules over a country with a population that has nearly reached 1.4 billion souls. In this capacity, he exercises authority in one shape or another over every politician, judge, government official, military commander and manager of a state company in China. He is also effectively the CEO of an economy which is set to become the world's largest when it overtakes that of the United States later this decade. What has allowed Xi to rise to such power has been the success of China and in particular its economy in the early 21st century. The ground was laid for modern China's economic miracle under Deng Xiaoping between the late 1970s and the 1990s, when communism was effectively abandoned and a form of state capitalism was adopted. Since then, standards of living and average earnings throughout China, particularly in the enormous cities which have emerged in the east of the country, have skyrocketed, and with them has come a willingness amongst the Chinese people to accept the status quo in the country's politics. In addition to this economic boom, the Chinese Communist Party is willing to accept Xi as its leader indefinitely, owing to the success of China on the global stage in recent times. Part of this has been built on the controversial Belt and Road Initiative, colloquially known as the New Silk Road. 
This is a major international economic program to develop the infrastructure of countries lying between East Asia and Europe by building new roads, ports and railways to transport China's manufactured goods as efficiently as possible from East Asia to the world's largest market in the European Union. In doing so, China has invested hugely in countries such as Iran and Ethiopia, which lie along the sea and land routes. Ultimately, though, this new position on the global stage has been primarily geared around a newly aggressive foreign policy. After centuries of being in the shadow of the West, Xi has affirmed China's new ascendancy to the world by challenging the US and Europe. The two-state system which ensured the independence of Hong Kong has been undermined. Claims to Taiwan are being aggressively pressed, and artificial islands are being built in the South China Sea to try to extend Chinese claims on territorial waters there, southwards towards the Philippines. No leader of modern China has more clearly expressed the re-emergence of China as a global power than she has. Thus, we have an individual in Xi Jinping who has risen gradually through the party ranks and politics in China to become one of the most powerful figures there since the foundation of the new China in 1949. In doing so, he has become arguably the most powerful political figure on earth right now, one who is not subject to re-election and limited terms on his power as his counterparts in the United States are. Yet, he remains an elusive character on some level. He will not be for much longer. The decisions about how China and the US square off to each other in the next 10 or 20 years will shape the global order for the remainder of the 21st century. You have been watching the History Chronicles. We'd love to know what you think of Xi Jinping. Please let us know below. And if you enjoyed our video, please give us a like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Also, if you would like to support our work going forward, please visit our Patreon page. And we look forward to seeing you again on the next episode of the History Chronicles.